Hi everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. This is Kathy, and I'm excited to share a cute Valentine treat box with you today. And we're pretty much gonna just jump right in and get started. To create this box, you'll need heavyweight cardstock. All of the white cardstock that I used is 110 pound Nina Solar White cardstock. You'll need two squares, one measuring four and a half by four and a half inches, one by four and three eighths by four and three eighths inches. And for the hearts that I cut out, I used the largest die from the Stacking Hearts set from Honeybee Stamps. And for the pink heart, I used the third largest die and then embossed it with an embossing folder. So we're gonna start with the two squares. It doesn't matter which one you start with. Just keep in mind that the smaller one, the four and a half by four and a half, that is actually going to be the bottom of the box where the chocolate will go into. You'll score on all four sides at one inch, and you'll do the same thing for the other square piece of cardstock. After that, you're going to fold on those score lines and make sure that you burnish really well. I like to run the edge of the bone folder down the sides just to get a nice crisp line. Once all of the score lines are burnished, you're gonna grab your pair of scissors and you're going to cut along the short score lines up to the first perpendicular scored line and then rotate the cardstock 180 degrees and repeat on the other side. I also like to cut an angle off each of those corners. That makes it a little bit more flush when you actually use the adhesive to glue those flaps together to create your box. And then you'll just repeat those same steps on the second white square. Once you're done with that, you're ready to start putting the little box together. To make it really easy to glue your box pieces together, I have found that if you have the score line bump face up, you can apply glue to all four tabs and then fold them to the inside Put a paper clip on there to hold them in place and then you can set those aside to dry. And using liquid glue is definitely beneficial when putting the square box together. That way you can kind of wiggle those tabs around and get the corners nice and square. While the white box top and the white box bottom were off to the side drying, I took one of the large white hearts, the large patterned paper heart, and the pink heart, and I just adhered all of those together with liquid glue. Once I was done with that, it was pretty much time to put the heart, the whole entire box together. And there are a few things to pay attention to when you do this. You wanna put the lid on the box so you know which is the box lid and which is the box bottom because you want to make sure that you adhere the bottom of the box to the white heart base. When I placed the white box bottom onto the heart base, <clears throat> kind of wiggled it around a little bit to make sure that it was centered, and then I put a couple of acrylic blocks in there to add some weight to make sure that I had a really good adhesive, adhesion for that white box bottom. The next step is to put the lid on the box. And I recommend doing it this way because it's easier to make sure that the top heart is centered properly on the white box. Apply glue to the top of the white box and then place the patterned paper heart on top of that. And that pretty much finishes up the little Valentine treat box. Now that box is cute right there all on its own, but I decided to take it one step further and add May the Mouse. So I stamped that little mouse using Extreme Black Hybrid ink from My Favorite Things onto a piece of Nina Desert Storm cardstock and then colored it up with my Copic markers. So I started out by coloring his ears and his nose and one thing with the Desert Storm cardstock is that you do have to let the ink settle in a little bit after after you color to see what it's really going to look like. Um, then I remembered once I was done with his little nose that I wanted to add a little tooth. Um, kind of a funny story there is that I kept looking at this one stamp in the set and I couldn't figure out what it was. And then I saw a post on Facebook that Honeybee had posted and 
I saw that the mouse had a tooth and then I it dawned on me what that stamp was and just look at how much personality it adds just adding that tiny little tooth to her little face or in this case his little face and there's also a pair of glasses and I thought that he needed to have a pair of glasses for sure for this project so I stamped that as well and then I continue with the coloring I'll be sure to list all of the colors that I used down below in the description and I have all of the measurements for the little box over on my blog as well as in the description below and I am going to leave you with some music while I finish up the coloring
Once I was done with all of the coloring, I ran the mouse, the rose, and the valentine through the die cut machine with the coordinating dies. His overalls, I actually stamped on blue paper and fussy cut those out. To put all of that together, I just used a little bit of liquid glue. Again, that makes it much easier to move stuff around and get them right where you want to be. I wanted to have the mouse be popped up on top of the box, so of course I pulled out my foam tape and put a whole bunch on the back side. But before I put it on the box, I added a little bit of liquid glue just so I could make sure that he's placed right where I want him to be. That finishes up the entire project. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. If you've not yet subscribed, I'd love it if you would. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.